Hi, this is video 111 of the restoration of the Lancaster I'm doing. We start off with Keith fitting the leading edge of the port wingtip. To be able to complete the wingtip and the leading edge, he had to wait for the return of the original Perspect navigation lights so he could line it up correctly. Uh, the new ones they made, unfortunately, they turned out to be wrong so they are still waiting for a replacement for these. So we'll start with Keith and the port side wing tip. And the other side just really a little rough. Yeah. Are these the ones Simone made? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And welded down the centre? Yeah. Yeah. case of uh, trimming and drilling. Yeah. I said, oh, you're just, you're just drilling up this side, are you now? Yeah, because it's, because it's flexy, is what you have to do eventually when it's all done and drilled off properly. This edge has to be turned in, mm. so you have to turn it in and then it has to be chamfered like this, has to have a chamfer on it. Yeah, to, yeah. Of it. When like, you turn it in, do you turn it in by hand with a... With a hammer and a block? Yeah, yeah. That's how I do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I was going to say a pair of pliers and just... Been, no. no, hammer and a block. <laughs> yeah. You put the block on the inside, you draw a line along where you want it, the curve to be, and then put yeah. the block on, and then... Just a thin edged block like that, and then draw the line on the inside, run that along the line, and then the the edge just gently dress it yeah. so you put a little bend in it. Yeah, it doesn't want to be a oh no, it's not a massive bend, so you you find it slightly over. Yeah. So when you, you actually pull it up and rivet it up, it pulls and it stretches it out so it keeps a nice tight yeah. seal to the skin. Yeah. Because you don't want a big gap. No. Mm. It's oh this line here comes down but then Yeah, that's tapers how they drill the holes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just if I'd have done it, I wouldn't have done it like that. No. <laughs> they no. just bang the holes in. You know, during the forties. Yeah. Not free wall, but during the forties. Yeah. So you're just following the line of the holes. <coughs> Those ones were already in. Yeah. These I've plotted myself. Yeah. So they follow a nice, if you can see on the inside. If you look up the inside, you see it? Yeah. Can you see it? Oh, I yeah. Do you want a light? Yeah. The light would be better, I think, but it. I can lighten it up when I get a hundred. If you've got a light, it can... Yeah. You see how that's a nice even... Yeah. Distant, same distance from the edge of where yeah, the skin the is. Yeah, along, yeah. Yeah. Because if it's too much material between the hole and the edge, because it sits out, it pushes the edge off, because of the curve of the edge. Oh, yeah. So you have to get there like the minimum edge distance you're allowed. Yeah. Because although they're, they're drilled 332 at the moment, they'll be going up to 8 because they've got yeah. the 8 through them. Yeah. I don't count some, the same as the other one. If you look at the yeah. other one, it's all. Yeah. Some. And then it's pop rivets this side once it's trimmed. Yeah. Mm. So it's getting there, slowly. <laughs> There's. The more I see it, the more a tremendous amount of work there is. Oh, yeah, phenomenal amount of work. Yeah. I think uh, everyone underestimated how much work was involved. Yeah. They thought, oh, it'll be a case just take it off, clean it up, and put it back together again. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. There's a lot of structure in that. Yeah. There is. Right, thanks, Keith. You're welcome. And these lines are making.
Will you let the sheet of aluminium find its own contours, its own shape, or will you bend well, it? Well, it's quite thin. It's uh, about 20 gauge. Yeah. Um, once I, once I'm happy with it, I'll, I'll put it in a roller. Yeah, you will roll it. To, to de-stress it, yeah. 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 Um, you'll get that nice curve on it. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment, I'm just picking up all the holes. Yeah. yeah. There's too much of a curve on it for it to be a straight piece fitted. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the, at the moment, the roller machine that we use is being refurbished. So, once that's back, yeah. from repair, I'll just put that in. Now, two months ago I met Phil. It turns out he's the chief engineer on the restoration project in Mississippi, USA. They are restoring an English electric line in Fighter. When completed, they're the only one flying in the world. So I had a word with him about this project. I'm, I'm Can I record this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, so I've been, um, I'm the Dave of um, the chief engineer for the Lightning Project in America. Oh yeah. Um, and um, it's uh, the uh, two-seat Lightning, T5 Lightning, and um, it used to be at Boscombe Down with the test pilot school. Yeah. So there was a documentary series on BBC One in about 1980 featuring, it's called Test Pilot, and the lightning was featured. Yeah. So it's that, that lightning from Boscombe Down. So we've been restoring it, a bit like this, uh, been restoring it for over 15 years. Yeah. It's had a full cockpit restoration, yeah. and a full restoration, an ongoing restoration, and the ambition is to get that lightning flying. And if it, um, when we gets to the end of the uh, the yeah. project and it's flying, that'll be the only lightning flying in the world. Oh, so it's good! Become that rare now. The South African lightnings are not flying. No. Um, are you an engine man or? A I'm a jack of all trades. Framework man. man. <laughs> I'm I'm retired uh, 31 years in the Air Force. Uh, uh, then I went to work for BA Systems and the Serco uh, on the. Um, the Typhoon with the A systems at Coningsby yeah. and um, with the um, Royal Squadron at Northolt as the maintenance manager there yeah. looking after eight aircraft um, as VIP aircraft down there and yeah. in service on the Tornado and the Lightning yeah. and so oh, good. Um, yeah I'm a yeah. bit of an aircraft uh, geek as well yeah so how long do you think you'll get be before you get the lightning up and running? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that everybody asks. But um, there, yeah, with COVID and that. Yeah, COVID set us back uh, at least 18 months. Yeah. At the moment, we can't actually get to, into America no. because there's still an embargo on um, yeah. because of COVID. So yeah. it's made it really difficult. We've got an American team members who've been um, keeping the project going. Yeah. But the British engineers come over and uh, search the project. So it's more a question of um, it's finance. The project goes as fast as the money is available. Mm -hmm. So we haven't got a blank check. Uh, we are pretty much like East Kirkby. We move forward based on the, on the budget. Yeah. So if I had an unlimited budget uh, and unlimited manpower, the, the aircraft would probably get flying again in about six to eight months. Um, so it's, it's about 85% complete. The, you know, the majority of the restoration is complete. Yeah. We're just down now then to the final things yeah. uh, that need to be done, like yeah. uh, a crew escape system, the ejection seats, all, all the high dollar items. Yeah. So the, it's the FAA out there, isn't it? The FAA are yeah. out there, yeah. So are the, you registered with them? Or? We are at the aircraft registered yeah. with the, um, the American FAA. It's got yeah. its own American serial number. Yeah. And. Um, Effectively, the regulator have got more of an open mind to uh, vintage aircraft in America than they have in the, in the UK. Yeah. Uh, we will be flying under what's called airshow experimental category, 
you can't fly supersonic uh, over mainland America, but we're right on the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. So we're you can nip it up, out. operating in international waters. Yeah. Uh, but um, although the Lightning is a supersonic aircraft, you can't fly any civilian owned aircraft supersonically unless it's on a government contract. Yeah. Mm. Uh, involved with well, you change. wouldn't really want to go supersonic, would you? Uh, you don't need to. I mean, you don't need to pull the amount of G that uh, no. they did when they were in service. You can actually tone everything down and pull back on the amount of G. The Lightning was limited to 6.5 G in service, but you could put a limit on our aircraft and say 3 G. Yeah. Um, but um, it is a supersonic aircraft. It can fly at twice the speed of sound. So I think going at once the speed of sound yeah. will be okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's 50% of what its capability is. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that would be very interesting. Yeah. Uh, are, are you online with it over there? Yes, uh, we are on uh, lightning422.com. So yeah. we've got our own web page. Yeah. Um, well, I've recorded that, so I'll check yeah, it out good. when I get yeah, back. Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah, you might even see me playing around with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, good. Right. Thanks, yeah. Phil. Nice talking to you. In the description below, I will leave the web address. Go to his face page and check out his videos. I checked out one and he was talking about the tyre pressure of the Lightning at 350 pounds per square inch and it was filled with nitrogen instead of air. Also in the video it talks about this being the only aircraft he knows that has fuel tanks in the ailerons. By the way the Lancaster tyre pressure is about 43 pounds.